I'm Sean Bose, concert visual designer in Los Angeles, California. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can animate parameters inside Resolume and how you can use envelopes to customize those animations. These techniques are really powerful for adding customized automation to different parameters inside your Resolume show, which can create complexity and rhythmic elements without the need to grow an extra arm or wear out your button pushing finger. Let's jump into Resolume and see how it works. You can animate pretty much any parameter inside Resolume by hovering over the parameter name, clicking the cogwheel icon that appears, and choosing one of the options from the menu that pops out. I have another video that goes over some of the audio options in this list that allow you to drive parameters using incoming audio. So if you miss that, check that out. And also note, some of these envelope tricks can be used with those techniques as well. Big brain shit. Big brain. But let's go back into Resolume and try this out. All right, so let's animate the position of this circle. We hover over position, click the cogwheel, and first let's set it to timeline. This opens up a whole new set of options here, and let's see what they do. Here we have the beginning and end of our range, so we can set that to something a bit more reasonable. We'll go negative 800 to 800, so it's just moving across our screen here. We also have the duration in seconds. In timeline mode, our duration is in seconds. We can set this to whatever we want. Uh, let's set it to two seconds. And as you can see, over the duration of two seconds, our position is automatically animating from the beginning to the end of our range. We can also reverse this so it starts at the end and goes to the beginning and loops back. Set that forwards again. Right now it's set on loop mode, so it goes beginning to end and then loops back to the beginning. We could set this to bounce and now it will ping pong back and forth. There are other options here as well. Random, we'll kind of pick a random position and it has these all these other options, the speed, the interval, so every 0.5 seconds it's picking a new random place, how far it can go with each random. So we can set that. Now it's every quarter second. Or we do play once and hold. Or it'll play through once and then just stop where it is until we trigger this clip again. So those are a lot of fun options to play with already, but let's see what else we can do. If we go back to the cog wheel, let's choose another option, BPM sync. This gives us a very similar set of options, except that our time is now in beats instead of seconds. Let's set this back to loop. With our BPM at 120, this is very similar, but if we crank up our BPM, it's going to go a little bit faster. Something I didn't cover are these buttons over here. Instead of typing in the number, we can use the plus and minus buttons or the divide by two and multiply by two buttons to change our duration. These could be more useful for mapping to a controller for changes on the fly if you want to go double time or half time with your animation during the show. So this is pretty cool for adding animation to our different parameters, but I would like to customize this a little bit more. And the way we can do that is with envelopes. If you've used any other animation software, you can think of envelopes kind of like the animation curve in After Effects, for example. But if you're not familiar with that, that's fine. Let's take a look and see how these work. All right, so we've got our animation going with our ball going straight across the screen. 
at a nice even pace. And if we go back to the cog wheel, down towards the bottom, we have the option envelope. If we click that, that opens up our envelope or our animation curve. And you can see that it's a pretty linear animation, which means that as the timeline moves across in time, our parameter is changing at an even amount the whole way. And that's cool, but for different effects, we might want different options. So let's see what else we can do. So we have a keyframe here selected, and if we go down to the curve drop down here, we get a bunch of options. If you hover over them, you can see a preview. One that I like to use is quadratic in and out, and this is kind of like easy ease inside After Effects. Let's click it and see how it changes our animation. Now you can see that our animation curve has a nice smooth curve to it, which causes our circle to accelerate in, speed up, and then slow down to a stop, which has a totally different effect and feel than our linear animation. If we were to put this on bounce, you can see it has a nice sway to it where our linear curve really kind of smacks into the end. So these have totally different feels. Let's bring it back to quadratic in and out. You can also customize the curve and add more points if you need to. Let's set up an example of this. So we've got a BPM animation and our curve. And let's say we want it to, we have four beats. We want it to flip on the first beat and the third beat. So to add a keyframe, you just double click. It will add a keyframe and we can get really specific with uh, with our values using the values down here. Phase is done in percent, zero to 100. And then that is applied across your full duration. So we could do 12.5%. We want this to be, to go from negative 180 to zero. Then let's add another one at 50%, also zero. Let's move this to 62.5%, 180. And we can add some easing curves. And maybe make this longer. This is getting crazy, super powerful. I know your imaginations are running wild, but what if you want just kind of a, a quicker solution? Let's see if there's any more options that we have. So I've got this speaker image set up. We're gonna animate the scale to the beat. So this is way too much. So let's just go from 100 to let's just say 90. We'll do this every beat. Boom, 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 boom. 
Let's bring this back down. Don't, 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 don't. Cool. Probably going to reverse that. Oh, so it really hits. And let's start customizing with some envelopes. Now we've been over these parameters, but what about this P icon? You might've seen this before in other videos or areas of Resolume. This is our presets and we can choose all kinds of different presets. They've got the easy ease quadratic right in and out right there. And they've got a few other ones. I think this Jaws one might do something that we want. Get real crazy with a noise pattern. Save you a few clicks for some randomness. Let's go back to customizing something. Go to the default, go to our curve. There's actually some pretty crazy options inside the curve options as well. Balance is one of them. It's kind of got a cool vibe. So that's cool, but I think I want it to be a little bit more aggressive. So I'm going to add another keyframe by double clicking. And let's say I really, really like this and I want to use this somewhere else. That's where our presets come in. We can go ahead and save this. As our bounce that we like. Save that. And then even though I've been showing most of these examples on transform parameters, we can go ahead and add this to an effect or something as well. We've got this effect clip right here, with shift RGB. Let's go ahead and animate our distance also to the beat. Let's make it match. So we'll go to two beats, we'll add an envelope, and we'll use our bounce preset. Dude. Now our effect and our animation are using the same exact preset that we set up ourselves. All right, so that is how you can animate parameters inside Resolume and use envelopes to customize those animations to give them the feel and character that you want them to have. But wait, there's more. Bonus tip. Envelopes don't need to be used with animation. So you could use envelopes on parameters that you've tied to a MIDI control. Interesting. So for example, our rotation Z here, we could take this off BPM sync and put it back to basic. Tie this to a MIDI fader. And as we scrub through, it's going to move through the animation. I'm sure you'll find plenty of interesting uses for that. And don't forget, these also work with audio. So if you want to use audio to drive an animation and you want it a little bit smoother, maybe an envelope can do that for you. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Drop your comments in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.